Hello and welcome to another Path of Diablo build. <clears throat> this is my Zork that I'm currently using. It's a mix between fire and ice. We use uh, Immolate as our main skill, so we put 20 points there and 20 points in fire mastery. One point in warmth, <clears throat> then we go to lightning. We max telekinesis always and then we go 18 clicks on energy shield. This brings it to 85% absorb. Then we go to cold and we go one click in mastery and then we go the rest into blizzard. Okay, then you get your attributes and you get enough for your monarch. In this case, it's 142 because it has some requirement on it. So yeah, then we go to energy. All of it into energy. Okay. Resistances uh, are not capped, as you can see. My poison is uh, not maxed. That's okay. We can do... The resistances are not that hard to get in this build. The reason why is because you don't need facets in this build. Okay, let's show the character now. Here we are. That's the stash. Here's the character. Now you can see the damage of our spells. The immolate does 7.9k up to 11k and the uh, Blizzard does 3.4k up to 3.5k. So that's a good uh, guideline of where you should be. This is with all the uh, skillers being fire skillers except one which is cold skill. For this build I recommend looking for hit recovery skill charms. Try to get two, maybe three, maybe four, but the good thing is you don't need to focus on just one element. You can mix the fire and cold. So it's a bit easier to get. It's twice as easy to get. Okay, <clears throat> the rest of life. And then the other gear that we use is hit recovery on all the small charms. And here you get to play around with either giving yourself more mana or giving yourself more resistance. This one is also mana and hit recovery. The torch is trash, 15 res, and the Annie, the Annie is absolute dog shit, sorry, 11 res, and the torch is okay. Uh, yeah, that's the right. So that's where you play around with your resists, here and uh, here. And also you have uh, a lot of sockets in this build. So you have three sockets here, three sockets here, and four sockets here. So you can play around a lot with your sockets. Let's show off the weapons that we use. Death Fathom. This one has the facets in it. Because why not, kinda. Um, cold damage. Um, well, the actual reason is because we can swap weapon uh, for a shoot as when we need it. So anyway. Uh, cold damage increased 43%. This is why we only have one click into Cold Mastery and then we max Blizzard. Because this 43% acts like Cold Mastery and it's boosting a lot. Uh, yep, and it gives resists and FCR, this is a pretty good item in general, and 3 skills. So yeah, awesome item. Then we go head. The helmet I use is a uh, rare 220 so, uh, tiara, sorry. And uh, this roll is energy, strength and all the rest, and the jewels are strength and all the rest. You play around with these sockets and uh, yeah, you can use different uh, jewels, so you don't need to have specifically those kinds. But uh, strength is pretty good. There's also mana and all the rest, or wait, whatever. You want to get strength, mana and all the rest in this build, that's it. Uh, because strength translates into mana, so it's that's the reason why. You don't want to get energy because it doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, get multiplied by uh, Stone of Jordan and Frostburn, which is our gloves and rings. But anyway, move on to the uh, armor. Uh, 
Viper Magi, A Chum and a Facet. The other two are Hit Recovery Res and Hit Recovery Mana when hit. It's actually got Hit Recovery Cold Res only. So these jewels are not awesome. They're just some uh, random jewels. Uh, and the Facet is, uh, as you can tell, minus 4 plus 5. So it's just a whatever Facet and a Chum Rune because it cannot be frozen. It's nice to have. So as you can tell by this socketing here, you can definitely improve or be even cheaper and use, you know, um, two socket armor, you know, or, or yeah, even now not, no socket. You give it to Lars, you can add a child rune and get 20 hit recovery. You'll be there pretty cheaply at the armor section anyway, and you can start working towards the more important stuff which is the rune words we have two rune words on this build <coughs> frostburn gauntlets easy to find you want to aim for 35 percent mana and uh, all rests or whatever rests you need uh, really what you're lacking you can get from the slam on the gloves same goes for boots uh, boots could be a different kind silk weave is not ideal ideal boots would be a uh, caster boot a crafted boot with it gives up to five percent increased maximum mana and it can give i think somewhere in the range of like 80 mana flat plus it can give resistances so this boot can be improved by a big margin uh, but this is what we have for now the belt is arachnid don't need to mention why it's just arachnid donut jordans increases mana and the all gears and flat mana so this is awesome two of these necklace gives seven fcr so what happens with all these items right i should mention the shield is phoenix first phoenix gives minus fire resistance it gives a redemption aura which regenerates your hp and mana enough to sustain you in the maps and that's why we use it. It's full aura. If it had only aura and no other stats whatsoever, everybody would still use it. So we use it for the aura. The enemy fire resistance is awesome as well. The rest is whatever. But uh, yeah, we use Phoenix to survive. Basically, everybody does that. Okay, now we look at the numbers. So you can tell already the cast rate is not there. It's not 105 yet. But... Even so, we clear mass very fast and we are surviving very easily. Hit recovery though, 86% mandatory. Get to this first. Then you can tell already, I didn't prioritize resistances. Hit recovery is my priority. <coughs> 86% because you're going to be in close range with your emulate a lot. So you need to be, you cannot be stuck in animation. You're going to get fucking destroyed. So... We go 86, you want to keep a flow going, you want to cast the spells. You need to have the hit recovery in case you get uh, hit badly, you know, and get out of it without having to worry or panic. The cast rate can go up, I can probably clear these maps a lot faster with that, but uh, we have this now. As you can probably tell, the Stone of the Wardens are C and Seed, and the amulet only has 7. So if this had 15, or if we had... 10 FCR on a ring, we would be already at the nice FCR breakpoint. So yeah, but this is what we have. We honestly don't need it. So this build can be made pretty early because you don't need that uh, 105 faster cast rate. You only need 60 breakpoints. So yeah, to get going. Um, the other rune word that we use besides Phoenix is uh, Infinity. This is because we're using uh, two elements. Our mastery will not be there and uh, we're trying to clear as many different kind of maps as possible. So this helps our damage the most out of any item that we have. So we use it on the Merc 100%. The helmet is a V-Gaze. Two reasons. It gives uh, physical damage reduction and it gives life stolen. The armor is a shaft stop. One reason only. It gives 30% physical damage reduced. It gives a bunch of other nice things too. But it gives the PDR up to 50%. Which is the cap in this game. 
So what happens at 50% PDR? Well, you can already see the 8% lifesteal and the mediocre damage on Infinity. It's probably not going to sustain him, uh, which is true. He will not be able to sustain the entire map with you not giving one single fuck about him. So you will have to shift uh, heal him with uh, potions, you know, shift one, shift two. In my case, uh, heal my Merc. Uh, the reason for the PDR in these two items is to avoid him getting one shot so that we have a chance to heal him uh, before he dies. Because uh, a Juvia potion is a lot cheaper than 50,000 gold and a trip back to town and walking all this. It's just not worth it, too better to heal. And with this build you will be able to use telekinesis on the potions. So uh, it's very easy to keep the mercenary alive as a sorceress. Uh, just uh, learn to have telekinesis on a hotkey, pick up uh, Juvies as you use them. New belt will be full all the time. Okay, the jewels in this uh, is one charm rune, one splash IAS, and then the rest is uh, increased attack speed and resistance. One is uh, enhanced damage, but the ideal thing would be resistance and uh, attack speed on all the jewels. Uh, here you can see 30 attack speed here and the 45 there. 75 is a breakpoint for uh, Thresher and uh, also uh, Giant Thresher. Uh, so yeah, you want to get that. The resistances are not quite there, you see the poison is not uh, fully capped, but that's okay. We keep him alive easily, he cannot get one shot by poison, so we can heal him if he gets a really bad poison hit. Uh, okay, what else is there to show? Yeah, the actual how to play it I should show actually. Uh, so how do you play it? Uh, first I should tell you how it... How it fares in the game. So in the maps I ran three different kinds of maps. I did not have a ruined citadel to run but I ran three different kinds. First I ran a frigid 550%. That one took 25 minutes. In the case of the frigid I was using these grand charms where I replace uh, one, two, one, two, three. Yep. I replace three skillers from fire to cold. So now I'm running a little bit more cold skillers than I uh, I usually do because the frigid has doom knights which are immune to fire and a bit resistant to cold. So we put those on in that case. And then we ran a icy cavern. We used the fires. We used three the full fire actually except for the one here but whatever. We used uh, all the fires on Icy, 430% density, we killed it in 20 minutes. Then we ran a Musty, 460%. We also ran the Musty with the fire skillers, and we cleared it in 24 minutes. Musty is a little bit bigger than the other maps, but still 24 minutes, pretty good. The reason Frigid is a bit slower is because... Um, the Doom Knights have a lot of uh, cold resist. So what would be ideal is if I would have a few more cold skillers in my stash here to swap out for frigids. It would probably cut the time down to maybe 22 minutes. And one big factor that we're also not uh, mentioning yet is the cast rate is not 105 yet. So you can just imagine if I had 105, these times would be uh, reduced by uh, a, a decent chunk, I think. Uh, Anyway, let's uh, show how to play him. First, what you want to have on swap, which I forgot to mention earlier, is uh, you want to have a spirit in one hand. There's two ways to do this, but let's go through the first way. The first way to do with this, you have a spirit here, and you have a plague here. And the plague needs to have uh, plus three to energy shield. That's it. And this is just for utility because it has the lower resist when struck and in just some very strange scenarios you might want to stand around proc this and kill a certain target but that's one way of doing it so this is how you get energy shield a few more levels on swap and you can also cleanse poison if you get badly poisoned by something you can cleanse it by uh, swapping weapons, which is nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, you don't lose the cast rate because you're using a fe uh, sorry spirit here and a phoenix here, and you know, so you make up for the cast rate. So you can teleport with this or whatever. You can still fight if you swap weapons. Uh, yeah, the other way around uh, to do this is to have. Uh, 
something that I would like to have but do not have yet as well is a uh, five socketed uh, war staff uh, with uh, plus three to energy shield and then make a call to arms in this staff and use this as a pre-buffing staff but we don't have that so see there's a lot of things I don't have but this build still works let's do the 500% icy or 400 let's do I think this says fire resist yeah so it's fire resist I don't think is very fair <laughs> when we mostly use fire okay let's go and do some killing so in this map we have these little uh, demon sprites over there the ones that shoot fire bolts that are immune to fire uh, in this case the mercenary can clap them pretty easily but here we got an uh, elite so i shot the blizzard shot another one shoot another one here he dies okay let's see here it's a bit more dangerous so now we can start zoning a little bit because this room looks a bit dense so we uh, throw blizzard move around there we go clean and then we move on to the next see not all rooms are like that but uh, see all these creatures are not fire immune so we just blast them to smithereens here we go we're accumulating a few immunes over in the south that we're gonna join up with whatever immunes we have here okay let's see yep so we don't want to waste too much time with the immunes so we gather them and blast them with the blizzard together there we go it's a lot of immunes in this group and also a little special guy over there got some drops here should pick up okay here we got a few immunes so throw a blizzard forget about it for a little bit kill the non-immunes come back throw a blizzard in our trail uh, like we throw it behind ourselves so when the monsters come, they get frozen and take a bunch of damage. So we're leaving these mobs behind because we're throwing blizzard behind. Right? See, they died. The blood lord that was here dead. And we did not focus him with fire. We just left a blizzard there and five monsters died. That's what makes the build fast. <laughs> it's uh, how you play it. Uh, Right, the blizzard is not to stand here and shoot this one guy until, and then shoot this one guy until he dies, and then shoot the next immune until he dies. That's not how you do. Gather them up and blast them with blizzard. Uh, swap charms for the different kind of maps. If they have more fire immunes, then you go with more cold charms and vice versa. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, peace out, y'all. Have a good weekend, a good day, a good whatever it is where you are right now. Peace out.